camera's going to be here. Okay. And you're going to have a blindfold on. We're going to take you down a ladder. I'm going to have to carry you down a bit to get to go down the ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is it? It is. Tell me when it's a duck. We're not in Narnia yet. We're still on the stage. Yay. They filmed my first entrance into Narnia in Kelly Park, as though it was Lucy's first entrance in Narnia. And action, Georgie, open your eyes and turn around and walk out. Look at Narnia. I turned around and I opened my eyes and I was just... That was really fun. I'm sure millions of children did it. You go to the wardrobe in your house and you start knocking to see if anything's there. But it's just the fact that it just might be and that you might be the, 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 the child chosen to go to this magical land. And in a way, we four are, you know, brought to this magical land in mean, this surreal place. It's really changed my life being here. If you ask me, Narnia is this film set. That probably sounds so cheesy, but who cares? <laughs> Probably the biggest surprise for me on the entire film was getting the part. I wasn't looking for the chocolate box kids or the child actors. I was looking for real kids who could actually really understand and live these characters. I was a girl who um, sang and danced in pantomimes and had a good time at school and, you know, all that good stuff. And, and, I, and I keep saying to myself that it was only a fluke that, you know, people who came up, the casting director came up to Yorkshire. Every Thursday. I would go to a little community acting class after school. And yeah, I sort of learned sort of basic things and went up and up and up. And um, Pippa Hall, the casting um, director, came round and saw me. My first audition, I just talked about myself. And Andrew said to me that the best thing about that audition was when I was talking about a book that I was reading. It was quite a sad book. And he said that when I talked about it, I looked sad. And um, he thought that that was good empathy. And then I went through a year and a half of auditions. I was late, and there's a lot of traffic, and it was raining, so I was there, like ran in at the last minute. And um, people who had um, rented out the building next came in, like get out, get out. So half of my audition tape was actually like in a corridor, in a lift, sort of everywhere. As they got closer and closer, I became more and more nervous. Yeah, I mean, I remember doing a read through, and I was so nervous, I was almost like shaking, you know, with the, with the face on, like. Trying to focus. I think I sort of pretended I didn't mind right up until the last couple of weeks, and then I really did mind. Once, you know, Pippa Hall, the casting director, said, Yeah, I'll be six months in New Zealand. And I was sort of cool. And then we got in the car, I'm like, Yeah, we, we, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. I think I probably deafened Mark and Andrew with screams of joy. <laughs> I'd never felt such euphoria, I don't think, ever. It was a good day. Fantastic. Lucy, come on! and everything changed for a little bit. Bye, my dear. My mum will miss you so I've never been to New Zealand before, and before I came out, I was not scared, but obviously daunted about coming to a new country. 
probably more scary for my mum, you know, that I'm halfway around the world. Her eldest son leaves home at the age of 17 and lives halfway around the world. Wow! This is so cool! OK, now I've got to get on with filming. The kids, they are kids, and it's all about them having fun. All right, and this movie works if those kids have as much fun as they can. They're kids, and we've talked about this for a long time, and let's just roll up the shirt sleeves and, you know, kick some butt. It is total amazement for, for all of us just to be thrown into this huge, great big whirlwind of a film set. Amen. And action. The whole film experience is a bit like going into a wardrobe itself. It's kind of going into this sort of surreal world, like some amazing dream. And I just experience it together and to work through the adventure together. And cat. Good. We really did have a very sort of close bond. You're saying that we should just believe her? She's your sister, isn't she? You're a family. You might just try acting like one. Peter winds up. Poised to take yet another wicket. Ow! Andrew really wanted to find children who got on with each other in those sort of family roles. And I've been really lucky to be a part of that sort of family unit. I feel that big sisterly thing. We are like a family, you know. We do get annoyed with each other, and we aren't afraid to say, get lost, leave me alone. We aren't afraid to, because we know we love each other. Hey! <laughs> hey! You'd see Georgie feeling a little insecure and just go and sit on William's lap. Quite often, you'd just see Anna walking along with her arm around Georgie. Scandal was the funniest because he's 13 years old. He had made a great pretense of trying to avoid any sign of physical affection. And we would just periodically yell group hug and all jump on him and give him a big hug while he squirmed. It was all a very natural dynamic. It wasn't always glamorous. I mean, I was sort of kitted up in wet suits and wading around in mud or paper snow. Or It definitely wasn't always glamorous. Every day, we we're pulling everything out of ourselves to get the best performance to really do ourselves justice. You're doing something where you have to give out a lot of energy and you have to concentrate. So that was hard, but it was always fun. I was in a, a little point so I was really excited to be doing sword fighting. Come on, Ed, sword point up, like Ori has showed us. Oh, God. Now block. Hey. The first day we were going for training, I was like, yes, I'm finally going to be able to actually do it properly. I've had a lot of sword practice and we've done, we've rehearsed this a lot of times and it's been really carefully thought through. Action! As a child I had this like, bag of swords and there was a different shield. I've always loved sword fighting and knights and everything and it's been really cool for me and I've really enjoyed it. And action! <laughs> with a fat minotaur, like six foot eight in front of you. A big ogre over there, a goblin. They yell, cut, takes off his head. It always felt slightly surreal, but it was so fun, the sword fighting. For Narnia and for Iceland! Horse riding, I absolutely love. I think we're gonna go out on a hack sometime when we get out to the beach as well. So it's going to be really good galloping on the beach, one of the few things I want to do in my life. Good. And we've been doing a bit of sword fighting as well, but I snapped the last sword we had, which was plastic. I went in too much. I think, I, was a, I, think I thought it was a minotaur or something like that. Andalusian. They're like Spanish horses. They're so beautiful, so soft. They're so clever as well. This is the first time I've ridden in bareback, so it's going to be a new experience. <laughs> Ride him like you normally would, Nick Raymond. You know that you're going through the pain at that stage, but you know that there's going to be some satisfaction at the end of it. And there certainly was. You know, I did things that I would never really dream of. Stand up, stand. Yeah, that's it. Good. Where are you going? 
to get in some practice. I'd done archery once before on a school adventure week, but certainly not in this context. Am I interested that? Just a little bit. And it was wonderful. I was trained by an Olympic archery expert, and it was not something that I would have had the chance to do in normal life at home. At first, I found it quite difficult, but it got easier. I really enjoyed being a part of it. No matter what happens, Lucy Pevensey, I am glad to have met you. You've made me feel warmer than I've felt in a hundred years. The feeling comfortable and the homeness comes from the people you're around. It's just been really nice because New Zealand's such a relaxed place and everyone's really open. <laughs> the people in New Zealand, they rock. All right, get in your tree! Oh, they just keep you going. Everyone from the producers downwards all the way were just so lovely. And it was really amazing to get to know everyone. When you're on set, it's so good and such a, you know, so fun with everyone and five in different individual people like, hey. We were just so well looked after. That was the lucky thing coming out. We're doing them coming out right now and then we're going to go back get into the scene yeah. this afternoon. He's a director. And on the other end of the camera is the person who doesn't listen to the director. <laughs> You know, I was actually terrified about doing a movie with children. <laughs> it was just, it's a scary thing to do, you know, to, to pin your, uh, your future on children. He's not only a genius, which is rare enough in itself, but he's a nice genius. And he can, like, laugh if something goes wrong in a take. He's not going to go, oh, come on, let's do it again, come on. Oh, because in the script, it'll have to take a sip back. No, no, don't worry about the script. <laughs> First rule, don't worry about the script. <laughs> Finish the line, then you can go look for your snowball. Don't start your next line until you've found your snowball. What I really loved about working with all of the kids is that they gave me more energy than I actually even put into them. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ow! Did you see? Okay, let's go, let's go. And you allowed us to have a snowball fight with him. It was so funny. William got him right where it hurts. I got hit in right on the forehead, and I got him right on the top of the noggin. That was fantastic. It was heavenly. Yeah, and Georgia, if you could get William in the head again, that was good. He's really outgoing, and he's an extremely nice guy. He's really sweet. I've really enjoyed working with him. Hey, cat. <laughs> How are you finding your costumes? Um. I think they're really sweet. I think they're really, they're really good. And I think I think that they didn't in the nine they must have had quite cute clues in the in the nineteen thirties and forties. <laughs> My coronation dress, oh it felt so good. I'm Queen of Heaven. <laughs> They were so beautifully done, and just to put on like a 1940s clothes, and you know, once the clothes are on, then it it almost becomes part of you. You know, you almost become Peter for the day, or for the seven months. Aslan. This is a um, a coif which I'm wearing at the moment. This chainmail at the top. I do have a helmet, but I'm not wearing that at the moment. They call this the Iron Fist. These are, these are called van braces, which work as a basic arm guard. I can't move my head or I'll be stabbed. I'd like you to stand in the mirror, Skander, for us, please, so we can get a look at what, okay. at what you really look like. I'm physically there, you know. I'm not having to act a hero. I'm not having to pretend in, in a green screen outfit, you know. Once you get it on, you sort of stand back and you stand tall. Hero. Thank you. At the coronation, we are all sort of decked out in velvet. It was really lovely. It was fun to dress up. Andrew's very into real reactions. 
here we are in Narnia. Um, it's really cool. And it's so cool, actually. And I'm just about to do the scene where I meet Mr. Tumnus. But they kept Mr. Tumnus a complete secret from her. She'd never seen me as Tumnus, not even seen a photograph or anything. <laughs> Emma is and James in first position. When I first saw Mr. Tumnus, I screamed! I was like, ah! ah! <laughs> we're in such a big, humongous job, but we're still worrying about how the actor reacts and how we can be innovative with young actors and feel the magic that they should be feeling. That is great. You look like you're really excited. Look at that. So many different factors contributed to getting lost in the scene. For instance, the sets. The entire scale of it. What they did was they dug it out and then they put like 40 foot trees in it and then like covered it all with like gallons and gallons and gallons of fake snow. It's amazing how realistic it was. A lot of the times I'd wonder whether they've created this for us or for the audience, you know, because a lot of these things weren't going to be seen. A lot of these details, a sewing machine from for Mrs. Beaver, you know, needles or something in the corner. But for us, just to see it and just to feel that, that we're actually there, it was really, really amazing that we were all just there together, believing and trusting. Children are just so open, and they're so able to believe in what they're doing. You see, the only wood in here is the back of the wardrobe. One game at a time, Lou. We don't all have your imagination. I wonder why it went like this. I think being in a film or being on a set really makes you look at cinema in a different way. When you're watching a film, you think, oh, I wonder how they did that, or I know how they did that. Special treatment for the special boy. And cut it. Cut it. Checking the gates. Got it. Checking the gates. Checking, Checking it. Checking the gates, please. Check the gate is when it's a good take and the director's happy with it, so he says, check the gate, which means check it. And it's always a cameraman who looks in and says, it's good. That's to make sure there was nothing in the gate of the camera, which is the correct terminology. And if the gate's good, then we'll use the take. And if the gate's not good, then we'll have to do another one. Cut it. Good. Checking the gate. Checking the gate. Check the gate. Check the gate. Watch it. Check the gate. Show me what you got. Check the gate. That was just something that I don't know how it actually came about. So I said, like, why don't we have a song for Check the Gate? And then um, Skander actually made up the song. Check the gate. What's up? Check the gate. Show me what you got. Check the gate. What's up? Check the gate. Show me what you got. Check the gate. What's up? Check the gate. Show me what you got. Check the gate. Show me what you got and check. <laughs> you saw outside. This place is huge. We can do whatever we want here. Tomorrow's going to be great. The weather's completely crazy. It just changes all the time. <laughs> I feel so sorry for the people who have to organise what we shoot and when we shoot. I'm leaving if we get this shot done. But it's meant to be summer and it's going to snow any second now. A lot of time we'd be working in a studio, but as the film moved on and it became summer in New Zealand and springtime in New Zealand, we started to do more outside. That river is wet! Okay. That river is wet! It was freezing. <laughs> Absolutely freezing barefoot. It's amazing the amount of fuss that's made as well, because the moment we step out of the water, it's like foot spas, towels, hot water bottles, blankets. Yeah. 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 Oh, that changed the look uh, on your face. Even though we, we did have a lot of rain and times when it was difficult with the weather, you know, out of it all, we were really lucky with everything. I'm so glad we got down here at last, because I've been dying to see the South Island for such a long time, you know, and it's so phenomenal just to see the real beauty of New Zealand. Today we've got a scene at Aslan's camp, so I can't wait to see it. 
It's very exciting, it's very beautiful and it's very sunny. One of my favorite scenes was me and Will horse riding up these rocks in like lush green grass and boulders and amazing New Zealand scenery with the sun glaring down and you have the wind of New Zealand going through your hair and it's like, whoa. of civilization is Christchurch and we're about an hour and a half away from Christchurch. Because some prosthetics, us staying in these little ski chalets which are about 12 minutes from set, which are not civilized at all. It's so crazy they're having all these helicopters. Do you think it's mad? It's really weird because they go like, they like tilt when we're going over the bush. We're like, ah! So no school today, it's baking cakes. <laughs> Food studies at home at. There was my birthday, which was amazing. I was really dreading it, because I was away from home, and my family had just gone, and I was kind of... And then sort of, you know, a whole new family come up. It was really great to have everyone be so friendly. Oh, thank you so much. Six inches. And my voice broke. Andrew was getting stressed. Fortunately, they all grew, so they kind of kept in check, and we just had to keep like tilting up a little bit and extending costumes a little bit. It's high. Well, my neck. Still yeah, a little bit tight. That's fine, I go. Yeah. But I think your shoulders are brown now. Yeah, I think. Your head's gotten big. Oh, swollen like a balloon. <laughs> I've grown four and a half inches in New Zealand. Oh. And there was one stage where we were shooting where she actually had growing pains in her legs and we had to stop and wait while her legs grew another inch. My dad hasn't seen me for three months. He came back and he saw me and he touched me on the shoulder and I stood up and I was almost looking at him eye level and you should have seen the shock on his face. <laughs> get them out! I get them out! And this is what it's meant to be about, you know. I, I'm meant to have changed from this experience. And that. I don't think you can go through that kind of experience without changing. Ah! <laughs> Just completely overwhelming that we've actually been here for six months. It's been so long away from home and it's been really hard to call home because of the time difference. It's like 12 hours. I have to get up in the middle of the night or in the middle of the night, morning or, yes, yeah, it's been really tough. We're all very tired and we're all sort of almost needing hope. I love William. I love William. We're so close to the end now, we just got to stay positive. Nothing can stand in our way. <laughs> it's going to be pretty elating experience when we fight when it's finally over. And thinking this is the last week and thinking, oh, this is our last Monday, everyone said, this is our last Tuesday, everyone said, it's sort of kind of bizarre that we will never be coming back after that. We finished filming up on the hill today with James and um, we stayed and watched Scanner do his last shot, um, which was really sad, actually. <laughs> Cutting! Go ahead! Go ahead. <laughs> Tomorrow is our last day of shooting, Saturday, and then Sunday is the wrap party, and I travel home Monday morning, so it's all really coming to an end very quickly. <laughs> Me, has been magic.
magical, so magical. It's been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> really just the whole thing is one big fun journey really when you do a film of this size i think the the surprises are this size i think the emotions are this size i think the pressure is this size but it's all good you know it's it it, it it's all part of the experience it's all part of the huge up here experience it's so wonderful to have met so many great people and to have had all of the surreal and bizarre experiences that we have had. Once I go home, I think it will be like a kind of dream. It'll be like coming back from Narnia and everything just kind of... When you watch the film, it's really easy to watch a film just as a story, but I hope that through watching it, they can experience some of the enjoyment that we got out of filming it. We're just four normal kids. <laughs> normal kids from England. Let's check the gate. Check the gate. Check the gate. Watch yourself. Check the gate. Show what you got. Check the gate. Watch yourself. Check the gate. Show what you got. Okay, if the gates are good, that would be a wrap.